I was an absolute mess as a freshman Cornell student. I lost all 14 of my initial friend group. After the first semester, I switched my major. I ate way too much of the Cornell dining hall food, which has no right being that good. And I did not know how to plan. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything that I wish I had known as a freshman Cornell student. Make sure to watch until the end because I share probably the best lesson then. Firstly, I would build a self-learning habit while in school. One of my favorite quotes from Mark Twain is that you should never let school get in the way of your education. Chasing straight A's in college makes you dumb because it makes you prioritize getting the grade over learning to love learning in the first place. Unless you're trying to become a lawyer, doctor, engineer, or lawyer, doctor, engineer. It's a thing now, I made it up. You don't need to get straight A's in your college classes. So in my first semester, I created a self-learning habit. By reading a book I was interested in for an hour and a half every single night if I wasn't doing something else. This kept me intellectually curious because I was reading stuff like evolutionary biology, chemistry, psychology, business, and I was just combining it all together into one massive love of learning loop. Love of learning loopios. It's gonna be my new cereal when I make a million dollars off this channel. <laughs> what am I saying? If you wanna remain relevant when you leave college, you need to keep learning outside of it. Secondly, I would start a side hustle while in school. Building a side hustle while in school forced me to learn time management skills, develop a love for learning, become more disciplined. Was it easy? Absolutely, it was the easiest thing I've ever done, piece of cake. No, it was super hard. There was one month where I was in three clubs creating a weekly podcast, a newsletter, a YouTube video, a digital course, sleeping eight hours, exercising, and doing stand-up comedy all while having a regular course load. I remember waking up in my dorm room and instantly getting hit with a wave of anxiety, thinking, how in goodness gracious am I going to get all of this done? I had to learn to be very intentional with my time. I scheduled everything in my Google Calendar. I scheduled when I would have meals. I scheduled when I would see friends. I scheduled when I would breathe. Joking, I was not that routine. That would be pretty insane. You might be thinking, but Edon, where is the time for all of the, the spontaneity and, and the fun and, and the relaxation? Here's a question. If you care so much about spontaneity and freedom, why did you sign up for four years of being told what to do? I'm of the opinion that life is seasonal. There are seasons where you'll become more work focused and there will be seasons where you're more relationship focused. Your college years should have a mix of both. So that's why I think it's so valuable to start a side hustle, to get that work season of your life inside of college. And if you wanna get started with a side hustle, one of my biggest recommendations is content creation because definitely not biased, not at all what I do. And I have a free resource up above, ultimate beginners resource list for college content creation, which you can check out in the description below. Next. I wish I diversified my friends. You are profoundly impacted by the five people that you hang out with most. If your friends play video games, eat unhealthily, and don't exercise, you're probably gonna do the same. You gotta find friends that are like what you want to be like. It's way too easy to make friends with just the people in your dorm room when you get to college. But if you do this, you're probably not gonna find people that resonate with you. I remember I found a 14 person friend group immediately when I came to college. I remember walking into the first party at Cornell and going up to the first guy that I could find. And pretty soon 14 people had surrounded themselves around me. And those are the people that I hung out with. But as the months went on, 
I found that I didn't resonate with them as much as I thought. I remember there was one dinner where a month into college, we all got together again at a dining hall and I was so excited. This was the first time that I was gonna see all 14 of my friends again. I get my plate, we sit down and everybody goes on their phone, scrolling through TikTok, through all of these mediums. And anytime I try and start a conversation, three sentences later, they're back on their phone again. I realized I didn't resonate with these people, but that's okay because that made me want to look for friends that would be more like what I wanted to be. I wanted to find friends that I could have even after Cornell. I wanted to find friendships, not situationships. If you want to find friends that resonate with you in college, check my video up above about how to find friendships of character inside of college. Next, become the person that plans things. I know it's unfair if you have to be the person that plans everything, but if you're only ever the one that accepts invitations, you won't have time to cultivate deep friendships. Plus, planning things lets you choose what you get to do with friends. So each week I have a task on my to-do list to plan something fun to do with friends over the weekend. This could be like a three to four hour stint into hiking in Buttermilk Falls or apple picking, seeing an alpaca farm, whatever. But I also have times where I plan in dinners, like regular rituals with friends so that I can make sure that I continue to keep that relationship going throughout college, even when times get hard. Next, I wish I figured out my why earlier. As Nietzsche said, those who have a why can endure almost any how? Most students I know at Cornell have no concrete plan for what it is that they're doing. Heck, when people ask me, why are you doing nutrition sciences when I first came to Cornell, I would be like, food, it's good. This is what I recommend you do. Sit under a tree, close your eyes, and meditate for 30 hours. Don't do that. <laughs> my personal favorite method for figuring out my why is regular daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly journaling, but also doing the Odyssey plan exercise. The Odyssey plan exercise is an exercise for uncovering what your why is as a person. It has three questions inside of it. What does my life look like five years from now on my current path? What does my life look like five years from now on a different path? What does my life look like five years from now if societal obligations and money weren't an issue. I'm not saying you have to complete this exercise and then have sudden immense clarity over what it is you're gonna do, but it does really help. And if you want to learn how to do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly reviews for yourself, you should check out my lifestyle design toolkit in the description below so that you can start figuring out your why inside of college. Next, stop multitasking. Please, it does not work. When you multitask, doing two highly cognitive things at the same time, it's not multitasking. Your brain is rapidly switching between both tasks at the same time, which causes tremendous amounts of cognitive load. But multitasking can get worse than that. Multitasking inhibits our focusing muscle, which makes it harder to get into the flow state and also increases our tendencies to mind wander, which ultimately robs us of some of life's most enjoyable experiences because the flow state is like crack. But if you didn't have to take crack to feel like you were on crack, that was not a very good analogy. Let's just act like I didn't say that. It just feels really good. Multitasking is like trying to play two symphonies on the piano simultaneously. Your brain becomes a, a frantic conductor, hastily flipping through the notes of each piece and at the same time, unable to enjoy each piece for what it is. Despite this, practically half the students I see at Cornell are multitasking. Uh, seriously, I'll be sitting in a lecture and, and I'll see someone watching a football game while taking lecture notes, while texting one of their friends on Instagram. It is incredible. If you wanna learn more about why you shouldn't multitask, check out my video, Multitasking is Destroying Your Ability to Love Life, up above. Next, I wish I got the Triforce of Health in order. So many students, where how little sleep they got, little exercise they're doing, or unhealthily they're eating, like it's a badge 
of honor. Not fulfilling your Triforce of health, sleep, diet, and exercise is not a joking matter. It's literally the foundation for you to thrive in college. When I was a kid, I used to watch YouTube up in the late hours of the night, exercise only when I was on a sports team during the year, and get a double lunch every single day for school. Seriously, a double lunch with chicken nuggets, ice cream. It was good times, but not good for my health. Now I am getting closer to the model of the Triforce of Health. And here are some of the highest leverage stuff that I do now. Firstly, I go to sleep and get up at regular times each day. I don't fall for the common dieting fads of restricting myself for a few months and then going back to my normal diet and then gaining all the way back. I stick to a diet which I could do for most of the year for most of my life. That doesn't mean that I don't do bulking or cutting at some points and go differently than that. But I do try and stick to a diet that I can mostly do all the time. And then I choose an exercise that's good for me. I don't force myself to run for exercise if I don't enjoy running. Next, I wish I joined more clubs. As a freshman, I avoided joining too many clubs because I thought I wanted to get used to college first. That's perfectly fair, but I think joining more clubs forces you to to get your time management in gear and also exposes you to all this new stuff to really hone in your interest. It's similar to the side hustle thing that we mentioned earlier. It really makes you have to, to be more disciplined to get your time management skills in order. How can you find clubs at Cornell? I found the campus group website was really, really helpful. I would take a big scroll through the email and the club leaders to see when the meeting times are and then email them as well to, to see if you can get in. And through this process, I found three of my favorite clubs, the speech and debate club, the outing club, and the board game club. Next, I wish I took more weird classes. I've taken a cooking class, a Buddhism class, a bike touring class, and more. Want to know what major I am? I'm a psychology major. And these weird classes, despite being a psychology major, have given me some of my best experiences at Cornell. My cooking class inspired me to become a home cook. Now, when I return to my parents' house during the breaks, I have tons of fun cooking African, Asian, and all these other stuff. And I can even do dinner parties with friends as well. What are you gonna remember years from now on? Taking a class that goes just with your major or taking mushrooms? Mushrooms and you still need to take that class. That's a weird one. Cordell has some weird classes. Here are some of the most prominent ones that I can recommend to you from talking to a lot of students and also taking them myself. There's Oceanography, there's Psych 101, there's Magic Mushrooms and Fungi, there's Food for Contemporary Living, which is my cooking class, six pretty good books, Food Science, Ice Cream, Acting, Human Bonding, Networks, and also Psych Better Decisions. And lastly, but certainly not least, the Wines class. It is notorious because it's the only place you can drink alcohol in the US without being 21. Big hack. Next, I wish I learned how to study. I was terrible at studying when I first came to college. I remember one year while studying for my AP world history exam, I walked up to one of my friends outside of the testing room and I was like, how many times did you study the textbook? I studied it four times. And he was like, really? I studied it five times and I was like, no. We genuinely thought reading the textbook over and over again was actually a good way to study. Oh my God. Nobody's gonna teach you how to do it. So unfortunately, I had to learn how to do it myself by watching YouTube videos, taking courses, and integrating it into my life. If you can learn how to study before you come to college, you're actually gonna spend paradoxically less time studying because you're gonna remember more from each studying session. You're gonna have more time to see friends. And finally, you're gonna enjoy the class more because you actually remember what you learn. Next, I wish I understood where partying fit in with me. In college, people are going to pressure you to party. And I recommend you go and see if it's for you. But after partying three times at Cornell, I decided it was not for me. Personally, I don't think partying as an activity is that valuable. And that's for three reasons. Firstly, there are much more healthy ways to socialize and relax. You aren't likely to find good friends and it's also bad for your health. So I would really recommend you make a conscious decision whether or not to party 
and see if you could rather spend nights with friends reading or getting dinner or doing something else. Next, I wish I explored Ithaca more. Cornell is one of the most beautiful campuses in the world, but I'm sure your college, if you're not at Cornell, also has some phenomenal nature areas. And if you are at Cornell, I highly recommend you take your time to explore some of these nature areas. The Arboretum, the Slope, the Arts Quad, the Engineering Quad, the Cows Quad, Monkey Run Trail, Buttermilk Falls, Truman State Park, and Cascadilla Gorge. You find a whole bunch of these by going on to Nature RX, which is Cornell's specific nature spot <laughs> for showing nature. My personal favorite spot on campus, though, is by far and none BB Lake. BB Lake is beautiful. I ingrained a habit during my first semester at Cornell of walking around it at least once during the day that I was at Cornell, and my god, it significantly increased my happiness. It was honestly incredible the difference between my happiness before doing that and after doing that. Next, I wish I did daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly reviews and planning earlier. One of the most life-changing rituals I ever set in place while at college was doing a daily mise. Daily mise is a regular time each day when you journal and check in with your communication mediums, your calendar, and your to-do list. And then you plan the next day. This saves so much time. Here's a process that I use for doing my daily me's around 6 p.m. each night. First, I follow the two minute rule while going through my communication mediums. While I'm going through, if I can't answer it in two minutes, I save it for one of my regular logistical task sessions, which are on Mondays and Fridays. I schedule that time in specifically for doing these higher than two minute things, so I don't spend just tons of crap time just doing it randomly throughout the day, which is what most students do. So in email, I actually tag those higher than two minute things with a, a later tag, so I can wait until Mondays and Fridays to do that. What about time sensitive items? I go through my calendar and I block out what I'm gonna do the next day. I also schedule what I'm gonna do in my task list. And I do this, I plan what I'm gonna do on the day by looking at my yearly goals, which are de then determine what's in my quarterly goals, which determine what's in my monthly goals, which determine what's in my weekly goals, and that determines what's on my daily goals. So it's a whole like holistic level system. This is real life-changing stuff. By doing this the day before, I wake up with immense clarity on what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. So I don't wake up in the morning and immediately go, oh, what am I gonna do? I know what I'm gonna do. If you want to learn more about how I do periodic reviews, you should check out my lifestyle design toolkit in the description below to not only get the templates for doing them yourself, but also get an explanation on how I do them a little bit more in depth. Lastly, I wish I had learned how to take linked notes when I first came to college. If you've read this far, this is the secret sauce that I, I really wish I had started doing this earlier because it is so powerful. Tell me if this sounds familiar, like a, a bad case of deja vu. Taking notes in class, I would copy exactly what the professor said verbatim. To study for tests later on, I would read my notes passively. And this made me a cookie cutter student. The student that copies the professor verbatim and thus, is like every other student. Being a cookie cutter student had three insidious effects. Firstly, my knowledge became a cookie cutter version of every other student. Secondly, studying dominated my life. In a desperate attempt to achieve an A plus on everything, I had to study for hours on end, but I wasn't doing it well, so I had to study longer than I should have. And finally, my learning was siloed from semester to semester. When I learned something in one class, one semester, never came back to it again. <laughs> I would just go to the next semester and just act like nothing happened. Here's the issue. In the digital age, your perspective matters more than your rote knowledge. There is more information than 
ever before. We live in a paradox of abundance. The quality of good information is only getting higher, while the quantity of bad information is also getting higher. As AI systems get better and better and more tasks get automated, it is your unique perspective, your background, your education, your genetics, your interests, your skills that combine to form something that no other person has. The issue is traditional schooling is built on industrial age model. It's trying to make you into the perfect factory worker, sucking away your unique perspective and draining your passion for school. Let's change that. In college, I had one realization that changed everything about note taking for me. If you take nothing else from this video, take this. There are no rigid disciplines in the universe, only concepts. All the disciplines, biology, anthropology, chemistry, they're just highly related concepts linked together. So there's nothing stopping you from taking those individual concepts and linking them to other concepts from your other classes across semesters or just your own personal interests. Luckily, you don't have to make the journey to taking linked notes and falling back in love with learning yourself. After a thousand plus hours of learning to take effective notes and studying inside of Obsidian, I have encapsulated all of my learnings with fellow YouTuber John Maverick into our flagship course, Obsidian University. In it, you're gonna learn how to effectively note take and study for classes inside of Obsidian. You'll flesh out a systemized process for taking notes and studying from your classes. You'll create a unique, personal knowledge base that compounds over semesters. You'll set up your system to require only 15 to 30 minutes of daily maintenance. You'll learn how to navigate the overwhelming level of information and get across FOMO. You'll learn how to integrate AI into your note taking, and you'll gain access to a community discord with fellow students looking to make the same transformation. Join the new student era today by signing up for Obsidian University in the description below. As always, have a fantastic rest of your day and bye-bye.